Okay, thank you. Welcome everybody to the Digital Learning for Work webinar, an introduction to BCS Level 3 Certificate in ICA User Skills, more commonly known as ICDL Advanced. A few housekeeping guidelines before we start. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A function that you can see at the bottom of the screen. We are unable to accept raise hands at this time, but we have set aside time at the end of the webinar to answer as many questions as we can if we haven't done so before then. Any questions that we can't answer, we'll take away and respond to. The webinar is being recorded and slides and a copy of this recording will be sent to all attendees later this week. So a few introductions on who you're going to meet today. We've got myself, I'm Becky Lemaire, I'm the Junior Product Manager. I'm also joined by my colleagues, John Masqueray, who is our Senior Digital Product Developer. Colin James, our Director of Sales for Schools and Adult Education and also colleagues from our channel partner quality team, Helen Bowles and Fiona Grayland. So the format of the webinar is going to be, I'll give a short overview of the ICDL Advanced course, and then John will demonstrate an example of the new content that you can expect, which would include courseware, updated syllabi, and a new qualification guide. Colin will then discuss how you can access funding and sales team support from our key account managers. And then Helen will run you through how you can work with a BCS and approved center. We'll finalize by looking at other products BCS offers that you can stay with us for your learning journey. And then of course, the question and answers I mentioned earlier. So why are we here? The level three adult offer is part of the lifetime skills guarantee announced by the prime minister in September, 2020. This offer is a long-term commitment to remove age constraints and financial barriers for adults looking for their first level three qualifications so they can go on to access training, enabling them to progress. Funding is available to pay for learners who do not have a full level three qualification. And this then will allow them to study the BCS level three certificate in IT user skills or ICDL advanced. I'm sure you're familiar with the report Disconnected and Exploring the Digital Skills Gap, but it highlighted the following facts. 76% of businesses say that a lack of digital skills would affect the profitability of their business, which a demand for advanced digital skills is high and increasing. That also went on to say the demand for advanced digital skills is no longer limited to specialist roles in IT. In fact, an analysis of job vacancies in 2019 found that in over two in three or 68% of the postings requested these IT skills were outside of IT roles, with many being in lower skill roles. And a final fact, that while digital skills are becoming increasingly important for employers across all sectors, many employers say they have skills gap in their workforce in relation to basic digital skills, but also advanced digital skills. And many businesses have struggled to recruit workers the digital skills they need. As you can see on the slide here, the, the qualification covers modules that are key to digital skills at an advanced level. The guided learning hours for this course are 179 and the TQT is 248. And it also comes with a value of 24 UCAS points. Each module has supporting courseware, either as an ebook or instructional videos. And all modules will have automated tests by the 1st of September this year and marking will be carried out by BCS for manual tests. There will be no more centre marking. Membership is also a bonus that we can add to this qualification. On completion, learners who complete the ICDL advanced qualification successfully will have access to the BCS membership at AMBCS for £20 for a year. This brings with it, amongst other benefits that you may be familiar with, professional recognition with the AMBCS as post-nominals, you can also have assistance in building your network of contacts to support career development, an industry tool called for CV reviewing called CV360, and also member discounts. But now let's hand over to John and see what forms part of the support package and assessment for this funded qualification. Over to you, John. Hello, thanks Becky and thank you everyone for joining. Um, yeah, so I'm now just going to talk a little bit about our product offering. So the um, the assets that we've um, put together and that will be available as part of um, delivering this qualification. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, Becky, let me just um, switch over and that's just so I can actually share some bits and bobs. Uh, give me two seconds. Okay. 
So everyone should be sharing, seeing my screen, I believe. Okay, so yeah, in order to ensure that um, our providers, anyone uh, delivering this qualification, teachers, trainers are really equipped uh, with the assets, the things they need to design their program and deliver this, um, particularly as a blended uh, program, uh, we've put these core pieces together. Uh, that includes a qualification guide, um, a set of syllabuses, um, there's also the um, courseware as well that we've uh, been developing and making available. So that's the uh, the ebooks, the online modules, and as of course, as Becky suggested, there's also the the online tests and assessments. Um, just to uh, give a quick uh, glance at the qualification guide. So what we've uh, done here is pulled together all the uh, sort of pertinent information, everything you'd need to know about the qualification in one place into this um, easy to access uh, uh, guidance document. Um, it includes things such as, um, you know, the intention of the qualification, who it's designed for, uh, the entry level requirements. Um, it also uh, provides outline of each of the modules. It's got a full breakdown of all the, the learning of uh, sorry, learning outcomes across all the, the modules. So the four ICDL modules and the BCS improving productivity uh, using IT module. Um, also provides a bit of a summary of the resources available, um, uh, an outline of the assessment, um, technical requirements for Skillsbox, which is the assessment platform, a piece on FAQs. And then the other bit that we've, we've put in here to add further value is a full glossary of key terms. And these are key terms across all those sort of five modules. So to help anyone who's maybe delivering this for the first time to become familiar with some of those um, uh, funky looking uh, terms that you'll see jumping out of the syllabus. Um, equally, it can help you with designing uh, further resource for your learners and also it also acts as a guide for them as well. So, you know, a few key terms are always a nice little um, uh, resource to have to hand. Um, and then so moving over to the, the syllabus. So the other bit that we've done with our refreshed syllabus for IPU, obviously there's a syllabus for each ICDL module, uh, but then when we get to our IPU, um, uh, syllabus as well. The other bit that we've added into this iteration is um, further um, indicative content and guidance. So you've still got the learning outcomes, which are you know similar to the or the same as the national standard, but we've just added further um, you know um, expected indicative content and guidance. So again, enabling someone who's uh, putting together their own program gives them a base to work off, thinking about the kind of things they could be discussing, uh, working with their learners, the types of things they could be in. Um, um, tested on in some degree in some of the learning objectives. So, for instance, like 3.3, for example, it um, highlights some of those sort of key functions that they will have learned about in the the, the proceed, you know, the initial four ICDL modules. And this is where we're sort of thinking about, well, in you know, in disqualification and in the assessment. The types of things learners should be prepared or enabled to be able to do with that with the software that they may expect to be tested on um, things like using pivot tables or macros or what have you. And then going back to where is my slide? Here it is. Um, so yeah, the so the courseware offering. So this is a, an addition to the product as well. So we've got the uh, ICDL eBooks. So they're providing sort of learning content. It's got um, you know functionality, how to use certain functions within applications. There's practical tasks and files that learners can actually get hands on with and play with. So um, they're very good, for, obviously, for self study. So if you're designing your program, you can bring that in, and that's another um, set of resources for self-study for a learner, or you can incorporate it and have it complement your you know, classroom delivery or virtual classroom delivery even. Uh, and then the other bit that we're, we're currently designing and developing is a suite of short bite-sized digital learning modules as well. So they'll focus on um, things like you know, basic principles of databases, certain functionality as well that, that all align to how an individual can use the applications to improve productivity. Um, surprisingly. So um, just a, a quick snapshot. Um, this is um, an example of a, a piece of learning we've done for our recent essential digital skills qualification. Um, obviously, as I said, for the, the this particular qualification, they're currently in design and writing, so nothing physical to share. But this just gives a bit of an idea of the types of resource. So here, for example, there'll be 
short video how to's on using certain functionality. Uh, there may even be, you know, uh, sample um, documents and uh, templates to download to have a play with. And of course, sort of knowledge check questions as well, which um, nicely align to some of the knowledge check that they may um, expect to find in, in the final online assessment as well. Now, just to give you a quick uh, preview of um, what one of those online tests may look like, I'm just going to bring this up. Um, so I just got to forget me, I'm just running this in a, a virtual machine. So um, this is the Skillsbox platform, which, um, oh, and just to make clear, any of the, the, the courseware, so the ebooks and the online modules, the, the individual would be able to access them via skills box along with the online assessments as well. So that keeps it all uh, tidy in one place with one login. As you can see here, quick introduction to the performance part of the test. So each test includes um, in-application tests where by there's a set of tasks, I actually open my software. There's certain things I need to do to complete each task and then it, it, it marks me based on uh, how I actually done uh, the things it's asking for? Um, have I been able to use the tools within my application? And the other half of the test is then knowledge, so um, your multiple choice style uh, questions. Um, so just to show an example, um, so as you can see here, I've proceeded and it's given me the first task. So um, as you would in the real world, I would be uh, navigating to a particular file, in which case um, it's drawing the file that I need, I'm opening it, um, relatively simple task to get started with, but I'm just following the instruction to then save the file um, to where it needs to be. And if I then, oops, sorry, answer the question. Um, the instant feedback like this won't be displayed to the individuals when the tests go live. This is just because I'm in a testing environment. So it won't be till afterwards that they'll see, you know, what they've got right and wrong. Um, but yeah, and then here's another example, another question. So uh, where I'm actually interacting with a form and I'm, uh, I'm, um, ooh, so I'm putting myself on the spot. I need to insert a legacy tool drop down form field. So um, Yes, I believe. Uh, oh yes, I think I might need to do something like this, and then I can, you know, go about um, inputting the required information. Yada yada yada, you know, and then I'll answer the question. So that'll take me through that in application. Realistic uh, examples, actually using hands on the application, um, and I'll be marked um, with the pass score being sort of seventy five percent for the the performance part and there's a 75 percent for the knowledge um, uh, part of the test as well um oh, let me just draw back to my presentation so yeah just to, again just to recapture so we've got a qualification guide and syllabus they're all available on our website um, the additional courseware as well that's another component to our sort of product offering which will be discussed later on as well in terms of our fees and obviously there's the online assessment as well uh, there is the option for manual papers as well um, that are still available which which we've had available for these qualifications too um, there is as well, just to show this, so this just a, uh, this is available in our guide as well. It just breaks down the system requirements for skills box as well. So understanding that obviously the qualification includes use of Microsoft Word, Excel, um, all that, those applications are, are an intrinsic part and must be available on the devices to, to actually undertake the, the learning and the assessments as well. And it's at that point, I'm gonna hand over to, um, oh, so spoiling the surprise there, if I can actually get out of here, I'm going to hand over to Colin, um, who will be able to pick up with you on the next part of the, uh, the journey. So thank, thank you. Thank you. OK, thanks, John. Um, those of you that are familiar with our ECDL Advanced, as it used to be called, um, are probably thinking that what you've just seen is a very different qualification. Uh, so an awful lot of effort's gone into refreshing that. And... Um, one of the main changes that's happened recently with that qualification is it's now eligible for funding under the level three adult offer. Need to make a, a shout out thanks here to Simon Ashworth of ALP, who allowed us to use some of his material from one of his presentations um, for this um, deck that we've put together. 
So if Simon's put it together, I'm confident that it's going to be um, very accurate. So it saved me an awful lot of research. So thank you for that, Simon. I don't think you're actually on the call, um, but um, recognition well deserved there. There are several government initiatives at the moment, all designed around helping people to upskill at various stages of their career. Either, either they want to move on um, to a different role or they want to get back into employment if, if unfortunately they've been made unemployed. So there have been changes to traineeships, apprenticeships, uh, new legal entitlement for the EDSQ programmes. Uh, but for today, we're only going to look at the level three adult offer. Um, two main points. It's now available to any adult over, over the age of 24 who doesn't already have a full level three qualification. And in recognition of the qualification being perhaps unfamiliar to some of our adult education provider uh, organisations, because they've been perhaps more focused on level one and level two previously, uh, there's an uplift to the funding, which is, a, which is aimed at making the transition a little easier and supporting investment if it's required in extra resources and potential uh, support for learning. Uh, so I've got a template in a minute that will show you where this uplift comes in. Um, can we move on, please? So technically, the, the legal entitlement under the Level 3 Adult Offer is actually only for 24 plus age groups. Um, although the Prime Minister announced it was for all adults, there was already a provision for 19 to 23 year olds to be funded for their first level three. So this is really a top up for 24 plus, which now means that all of the population are eligible for this. And there's no longer any um, factoring for employment status. So you can be employed or unemployed and equally eligible for this particular program. And the next one, please. So this is an example of basically how the calculations work. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this already. Um, so it comes from a government website with documents which we have references to in a moment. And the concept is you have a base rate based on the learning hours required for the programme um, that you're going to be funding. And on top of that, you have a thing called programme weighting factor and that is around the difficulty of delivery of that particular program uh, in terms of the resources that the centre has to invest in. So as per normal, because this is a sector 6.2 ICT uh, user qualification, the weighting factor is 1.12, which is grade B. Uh, so that's standard for any, anybody in this particular um, type of qualification. There are then two optional things that you may or may not be eligible for, um, which are uplifts, which are very much dependent on the postcode and the location of the delivery centre and the learner themselves. So the example I put below is based on the actual funding for our ECD, ICDL Advanced. Uh, so it starts off with a base rate of 1265. And I've got on the disadvantage uplift and area cost uplifts, I've put typical values. Uh, so I'm not saying that every one of you will be entitled to those. Some, some will get more, some will get less. Uh, but that would factor out using simple mathematics to uh, just over £1,800 per learner. Uh, as I said before, the government are giving a supplementary payment uh, aimed at helping the transition to a, a level three form of delivery and that's shown on the next slide. In fact we shown on the one after next. So if we can go forward one more please. So here there's £150 additional funding available uh, but that is also subject to the uplifts. So that would give you an additional 195 using the typical examples that I've put for disadvantage in area cost um, which would take you to just over the £2,000 per candidate. Um, so it does make it quite an attractive proposition to, to run a class of, of, of um, several people for this particular programme. Right, 
Thank you. You preempted my ask for it. Um, so these are references where you can find information, which I give a lot more um, meat to what I've just explained very, very quickly. So learning aims will give you anything you need to know around provisioning for the particular qualification. And then at the top right hand corner, you can cross check the rates and look at how they will apply particularly to your own uh, training centre location. And at the bottom in the green text, I've got contact details for members of my team. If you want more information around any aspect of um, today's webinar. Uh, and also we have now some sample materials for the brand new e-learning courseware, which um, both Becky and John referred to. So we can get you uh, visibility of those samples if you make contact with us and request it. And next one, please. So fees. Um, we haven't changed the fee structure at all. So we've got all that new material, which is going to come from um, John's team. All, all the newly developed um, supporting material will be part of the program free of charge. Um, the price will be the £118.75 that you currently pay. So that's the registration and certification costs. So that's mainly administration. And then you've got access to the five tests, one per unit um, for your candidates to complete the program. And if they're successful, get their certification. Uh, as optional extras, we will have the uh, practice tests known today as diagnostics for those of you that already deliver with us. Um, they remain as a package of 10 tests for £50 as an option. And then we have the ebooks that I referred to just now that we now have samples for for you. And they are an optional extra should you want to use them. And, you know, we're, we're aware that some people have uh, developed their own learning materials that they want to use. So rather than add those to the cost as, as a base price, uh, we've kept them as an option, which is our policy for most of our uh, qualifications. And they run on, on a three, six or 12 month learning license. Um, so again, you have flexibility of tailoring your own program based on um, your projected duration. And there are cost breaks depending whether you go for the three, six or nine month duration. And hand over now to Helen. Thank you, Colin. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so to start off with, if you are already accredited um, for the education portfolio, um, you'll be able to contact um, your key account manager and Colin's team and they'll be able to provide you support in adding the qualification. Um, the process that I'm going to run through is if you are um, coming on board and accrediting with us. Um, so to begin with, we will receive your application form. Once that's been received, um, we'll process kind of legal requests, uh, contracts and things. Um, you will then receive um, a visit or a call which will be conducted by an external verifier. Um, these are calls at the moment due to COVID, um, however, visits in a non-COVID world. Um, the external verifier will do checks of your test environment and confirm policies and procedures that are in place. Um, they'll also be able to answer any queries and provide any support that you may need. Once your call or visit has been conducted, you'll be then sent an ac action plan. Um, this action plan will include things like registering staff and uh, completing the training required for those staff. Once all the actions have been completed, you'll then be an accredited centre. Once you're accredited, you'll have access to the testing system. Um, then you'll have a post-accreditation action where you will need to apply for the Approved Centre Forum. Um, the Approved Centre Forum is an admin site and holds uh, documents and things like that. Once that's completed, all of your actions are then completed and you'll be able to place your order with your key account manager. And that's all from me. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Thank you, everybody, for joining in today. Um, we're just going to go over one final um, slide which talks about our progression route with your journey with BCS. So you can start with us right from essential digital skills, where we also know there's gaps in the market, right through using our digital module 
modular programme for progression after level three. And then we also have our higher education qualification portfolio. All information is available on our digital literacy webpage um, on our website. So any questions? I see some questions that have been coming in. Um, Colin, you might be able to help with this about is the qualification offered in Scotland? With okay. Sorry, I had an echo. Uh, the qualification is approved for delivery in Scotland, uh, but this particular funding model doesn't apply outside of England. Right, OK. Um, there are routes to um, funding for this particular programme in Scotland, but I wouldn't like to commit to exactly how they work um, in this forum. Um, the, the people that have asked the question, if they want to make contact with their account manager, which I think will probably be Claire Hickey or myself separately, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll publish our details. We can maybe run a separate session for Scotland. Okay, thank you very much. We'll take that on board. Thank you for the questions. We've also been asked about the price of the resources for the three, six, and nine month. Yeah, I know I'm just that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, three, three, three months. It's price per unit. So again, for flexibility, we uh, we've not said you have to buy all four units. You might, you may already have for instance, spreadsheets perfectly adequately covered with your own material, and you just want some top-up material perhaps for spreadsheets only. So it's completely flexible on a per, per unit pricing. So three units is um, £5.70. Sorry, three months is £5.70. Uh, six months, £6.90, and 12 months, £8. And um, that's the same price that we charge for our other um, courseware which supports our level one and level two programs. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, John, I know you might have to leave us soon, but uh, we've got a question, if you're still with us. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. lovely, thank you. Um, about Max, uh, mm -hmm. will the online learning work for Max? Okay, um, let me just come back. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the online, sorry, the online learning will be hosted on our Skillsbox platform. Now, um, um, I, just, I will need to just do a double check. I'm a Mac user myself as well. So whenever I run Skillsbox, I do need to run a virtual machine with Windows to be able to use it um, particularly with the assessments. The learning content, I will just need to double check and see if that can run um, on uh, Mac OS. Um, it's developed in software that shouldn't be prevented from that, but we'll, um, yeah, we can just verify and double check. The learning content, um, but the assessments are definitely um, not um, native to Mac, shall we say. Super. So that's all included in the technical specifications. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so is... Got, sorry, Becky, you've got a question there about the funding ending in, in July 2021. Mm. Uh, you, you've answered it, but I think I could probably add some more detail to that one. Please do. Um, if, it, if it's an ESFA funded contract, that you're delivering under for AB, those contracts expire at the end of July, and that's part of the natural contracting process that ESFA go through. So at the moment, they, they are going through a tendering and re-awarding process for um, new contracts to start from the 1st of August. Uh, the eligibility for funding doesn't expire as such. It's the ability to deliver against the contract. So if you have learners already on a program today, against an AEB contract, they won't be able to carry forward beyond the 1st of July. So you need to be a little bit careful with the timing of your starting of, of your, um, your learners. If you're a grant provided or, or, or a grant contracted provider, like an FE college, um, those learners can be carried across the uh, 31st of July, 1st of August deadline. So people who are on programme today will still be eligible to continue that programme into next year starting in August. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Hopefully that helps. Any other questions, please do get in touch with Colin and his team. Um, we've got some questions about unitized qualifications, about funding for those. Do you have any um, any response for that, Colin, or do you need to take that offline? Uh, no, I can give you a top level response. It's quite complicated, single unit funding. Um, my understanding is that there is no single unit funding option available for this under this programme. Um, you have to do the entire um, qualification. Um, you potentially could take out a learner loan for a single unit, uh, but I'm not familiar with anyone who's really done that as a, as a policy. 
Um, one of the things that we have discussed internally within BCS around the single unit um, question is if you already have some learners that have completed a single unit, um, there is an arrangement whereby you can have recognition of your prior learning carried forward into ICDL Advanced. So potentially you could, you could enroll them on a full ICDL Advanced programme, transfer their prior learning and achievement for the single units they already have, if you like, in the bank, and then you would be eligible, I believe, for the ICDL Advanced um, Level 3 offer programme. But I don't think you would be paid unit by unit. Okay, thank you for offering help of that. Um, we've had a question about some sample content. We've or Colin's already mentioned that samples of the ebooks can be available so people can see what's covered. And also in the qualification guide, all the learning outcomes are mentioned in there as well. Um, the presentation will be shared after the session. We've got some questions about accreditation, I think. Um, is registration for level three done the same way as for level one and two? Is that registration for the course of for approval to off, offer courses. I don't know, Helen, if that might be any clearer to you. Um, hi, so I think the answer is uh, yes, it would be done uh, via the ACF, uh, the approved centre forum in the same way as the level one and two. Super, and also Helen, while I got you, um, a centre with us delivered the level three about three years ago. Do we need to register again for this? We're already BCS accredited. Um, you're potentially already still registered, but it may be worth just dropping an email um, either through to Colin's team or our team, and we can double check this for you. Super. OK. Um, Colin, I believe learners can still do individual modules should they wish, can't they? Oh, yes. We, we, we're yep. quite happy to provide uh, individual units. Um, they're quite often popular if somebody's trying to upskill a particular application. Uh, we, our, our biggest seller is probably spreadsheets at level three as a single unit. That seems to be the one that people want to be really proficient at. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I'm just trying to get some high level ones which we cover. So how soon can students start doing the level three course? Colin, do you want to answer that one for us? Today. <laughs> the <academy. laughs> We're ready to go. We, we won't have the automated IPU as John described probably mm -hmm. until um, the end of this academic year. Um, but we have all of the facilities required to get somebody uh, enrolled onto a programme and to be able to complete that programme uh, with the materials that we already have. Thank you. Um, if a learner is in the middle of studying for advanced ECDL unit, will this transfer seamlessly to the new advanced ICDL unit? Will PSI Online continue to run or will it be replaced completely by Skillsbox? So just to clarify, um, PSI is Skillsbox, PSI work with Skillsbox, the platform will stay the same. Um, and if you're already on ECDL advanced with us, the tests that will carry over to nothing will have changed to impact your learning as well. Um, it's just, it will be available. The, the, the contents that John demonstrates are available on our website to use. So you can use them to support the continuation of your learning for your candidates. With regards to lots of queries about systems and will it work on Safari and Edge and things like that, there's a specification in the qualification guide of all the system requirements for skills box. If anything is missing, please do get in touch and we can ask that question for you. It's not a problem. Um, it does carry UCAS points. It carries 24 UCAS points, this qualification. And we've got a question about, is approval for this qualification come at a cost? Is that an accreditation um, for the qualification? Because the qualification price list, the fees are mentioned. Um, Helen, apologies, I was listening very carefully to what you said, but I missed obviously, the, did we say about how much or does it depend on what people are applying for for accreditation? I think that might be more of a question for Colin, sorry. Okay. 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 If, if, if you're currently accredited with us and you have approved centre status, you can add as many of our portfolio products as you wish at no extra fee. We don't charge a fee for actually being approved to deliver as such. Um, if you're a brand new um, customer to us and you haven't worked with us before there's an initial fee for getting you approved and set up and that would be 850 pounds in the uh, initially and that's broken down into your annual license fee to be an approved center of 500 pounds and the 350 pounds covers the uh, administration costs of getting you set up as a center so that includes access to 
um, Helen's team for support from a quality perspective. And it includes the audit testing that we have to do, um, which sounds awfully daunting, but really it isn't, um, to get you accredited to comply with Ofqual regulations. Um, so short answer, if you're already accredited with us, no, um, you can deliver any of any of the products that you choose to. Um, if you're not yet accredited, it would be £850 for the first 12 months license. Thank you. A uh, question about the costs, including mock tests. Um, it's not included in the registration fee. The practice tests or mock tests are a separate fee that's mentioned on the slide. And again, the price list is on our website. For any questions, do please contact your key account manager. Another question about funding, we might be able to help. Um, we're a small centre, but we're already taking learners through the advanced qualification. We haven't been able to draw down funding due to being a small centre so far. Will there be any way we can draw down funding for it? Testing your brain now, Colin. <laughs> what I would normally do in this situation, which isn't terribly helpful, I'm afraid, um, but because of the way that these contracts work, you have to have an AEB contract initially, uh, which tends to mean that you would have to be a quite, quite a large centre to qualify to get through the, uh, the tendering process. So the, the main route would probably be to, acting as a subcontractor to one of the ESFA prime contractors. Um, we don't really have the, um, the, the, the kind of network to be able to put people in, in, in touch with that kind of thing. Um, it, it's down to individual centres if they want to kind of network in their area and try and find some uh, bigger training providers that are looking to offset some of their uh, budget provision to a subcontractor. Okay, thank you, Colin. All sounds very complicated. I'm glad I'm not able to answer these questions. Uh, we have one about Nadine, who has learners starting to enrol. Should I delay them starting? I think the answer is no. Would you agree, Colin? It depends what your objective is. Um, if they have a deadline to be completed uh, because they need to carry the qualification forwards into maybe further learning, or uh, perhaps they have a job role in mind that this qualification is for. Uh, they probably have a deadline to complete. Um, if they're going to run the programme under the um, adult offer and claim funding for it this year, they have to complete those learners by 31st of July. Otherwise they're at risk of, of not getting their full payment. Um, so there's probably a balance between a, a commercial decision about what's the best time to balance my my revenue versus my costs, as opposed to what's the best timing for the learner in terms of what outcome they need and when do they need it. Um, happy to have a more, more in-depth conversation if somebody wants to make contact around that, because there are quite a lot of variables to, to kind of look at the best timing. Okay, thank you. We've had some um, helpful feedback from our colleagues. Um, Veronica mentions there may be ESF funding for single units. There is in my college for employed people living locally, so things to investigate. Um, Paul tells us that in relation to funding and delivery in Scotland, I believe that this will be funded through SAAS, Student Awards Scotland, and on a fee waiver basis. Also a possibility through an individual training award funded by Skills Development Scotland. So that would be a good um, development happening as well. Thank you for that input. Um, just time for a couple more questions. Uh, Robin has asked, uh, are the costs for the three, six and 12 months for three units per user? Uh, he only heard the three month price. Is it best to refer to our price list for that, Colin? Or can you summarise that for us? No, I can summarise. It's per unit. So if you decided that you wanted a full support package, uh, you would be buying four units of e-learning. Um, so if you went for three months, it would be £5.70 times four, uh, six months it would be £6.90 times four, and 12 months £8 times four. Um, but as I said before, we, we want it to stay completely flexible because we know that not everyone needs every unit. Um, some people use our materials as a complementary top up to the materials they've already developed or invested in themselves. Okay, thank you. Um, and just want to confirm, I think this might come up earlier, but um, it's hard reading questions and hearing the answers too. But, oh, little friends, oh, gorgeous. Uh, we've just had a question about, we are a centre that offered level one and level two through BCS. Are there additional charges for doing the level three course? No. No, I didn't think so. Right answer. Not only the, only the enrolment and registration fee. Uh, there's, no, there's no addition to the annual licence fee or the administration costs. 
Super, thank you very much. Um, John has asked that we deliver courses in the evening. Will we have online support after 6 p.m. if we have any issues with exam, etc.? Um, I don't know if we do, uh, but you'll, uh, uh, here's Helen, here's Helen. The customer support team are available until 5.15. Super, um, but Skillsbox Online might be able to provide support if we need to for that, but we would obviously, but I will feedback that there are some evening courses that deliver our tests. I will definitely feed that back. Thank you very much. A question about certificates. I believe you get one certificate at the end of the qualification, not for one per individual unit. Is that right, Colin? That's correct. Um, what we will do if due to circumstances, a learner maybe has only completed perhaps three of their five units. Uh, you know, maybe they've had to move away from the centre or perhaps they've been taken ill and won't be available for some time. Um, so by exception, um, on request, we have in the past provided individual certificates. Okay. Uh, but it isn't a standard process that each time you pass, pass the test, you get a certificate. Uh, it has to be by, if you like, mutual agreement or negotiation. Okay, thank you, Colin. A question about would teachers need to be certified themselves? I'm guessing to the level of the course. Um, obviously, we recommend that they can be qualified to deliver, but they don't have to have this actual certificate to deliver this course. Um, just a level three ability or advanced ability of using IT packages would help. And the final query we've got here about tests being accessible with Atlas Cloud. Um, I take your feedback on board. Thank you very much. I will go back to Atlas Cloud and ask them about their accessibility guidelines. Again, I think this is touched on in the, the qualification guide that John's produced, but thank you for passing on the feedback. Uh, oh, they're coming in now. We've got one minute left. Uh, right, okay. Will certificate copies be available on an e-platform as opposed to just having the hard copy? Is it for regulation purposes? They have to be printed a hard copy, Colin, is that correct? I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, certainly the, the, the e-platform e or e-certificates is, is a hot topic at the moment with BCS. Um, this cat's driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's certainly on our roadmap to move towards e-certification. I'm not quite sure where we are on that journey at the moment, um, but it is something that we are looking at because we, we appreciate it's much more efficient um, mm. to allow the candidate and the centre to, to download a, uh, an e-certificate copy using a password that's provided. Yeah, um, we... We've got a yeah, we've got a lot of questions about certificates and having them as soft copies being emailed rather than hard copy. So thank you for this feedback. We will take it online, uh, take it offline rather. Is there improving productivity as a unit in level three ICDL? Improving productivity in IT is a unit. Is there a way that anybody could take the improving productivity as a standalone unit, Colin? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, it could be done as a standalone unit and, and is done as a standalone unit occasionally. Okay. Um, I've just seen one other interesting one. Somebody, somebody's picked up on my point of transferring single units into a call. Mm. Uh, somebody's asking here, can you upgrade an award to a certificate by completing additional modules? Uh, same same principle applies. You, you can um, have recognition of prior learning of the award units that you've done and have those moved into um, the advanced, providing they are the advanced units. You couldn't transfer a level two award unit into the ICDL advanced because the units are specific prescribed units. But if you, okay. use, if you use the level three um, advanced unit as part of your award, yes, you could. Thank you. Colin, we're going to have to end it there. We've still got a couple of questions we haven't done, but please, if we haven't answered your question, please do reach out to our customer service team or to your key account manager. He'll be able to answer any questions that our website isn't able to. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you very much to my fellow panellists. I couldn't have done it without you. And we look forward to seeing you all and hearing your success stories of taking this course. Take care. Bye-bye now.